We're continuing our pursuit of a trophy today. No big deal, it's only Arsenal. Hit like and subscribe, let's go live the dream. What's up guys, Chasing Lamey here with episode number 64 of Living the Dream and today we play Arsenal in the Papa John's Trophy Southern Section third round. We currently sit second in the league but we have two games in hand over leaders Preston and only a four point deficit to chase down. Although to be fair, Blackpool have five games in hand over Preston so <laughs> you know they might also still be in the hunt just a lot. Anyway, there's been some transfer news, so I'm going to run through that very quickly, and then we'll get into the game. So, there have been nine players in, one player out, one player on the way out, and the first player in was Andy Manley, who is an Irish left-back. He came in for the grand sum of £850 from Brohead United, and he's not bad. I, I don't know if he'll fully develop, but for £850, quid, you cannot complain. He's the first man in. Joining him in the... Incomings is Glenn Porter, a Northern Irishman, joins us on a free from Institute. He actually may make the bench today. He looks like a decent prospect. If I can speed him up a little bit, I think maybe we've got a long-term winner here. Joining us on loan from West Ham is Mexican under-20 international Rodolfo Aceves. He is pretty good in a lot of positions, can play on the wings, can play up top, looks like a good prospect. He was kind of a necessary signing. He's played for West Ham already, actually, this season. So, obviously, they rate him quite highly. Don't know how long we'll keep him on loan for, but we've got him in for now, and hopefully he'll get a lot of goals for us. Also joining us on loan from Bournemouth, an old-faced Liam Matthews started his career with us. We sent him on loan to St Albans, then we sold him to Barnsley. They sold him to Bournemouth. He's come back here. He's a pretty good player, and I don't know how, how long we'll be able to keep him, but if we can keep him for a while... I'll be quite happy with that. Right winger Kyle John joins us on loan from today's opponent Arsenal. He's not going to play today. I brought him in largely to have a look at him to see if he was worth signing at the end of the season. It's not looking great so far, but you know, if we get him a few games, we get him a few games. He won't play today. He's not cup tied. He's just not the best option I have. And the first of two players on loan from Everton is Martin Lafondra. Really good looking midfielder, can play right wing, can play centre half, can play just about everywhere we need, and he's good in every place. So I'm quite happy to have him coming on loan. Really happy with him as a loan sign. He won't play today because he's cup tied, having already played in the Papa John's Trophy this season. But I get a feeling we're going to see a lot of him for the rest of the season. And his teammate Derek Roberts Bannister, again cup tied for today, a right winger. Looks really good under 19 international for England. Might need to work on his pace, work on making him slightly better as a winger rather than a wide midfielder, but I'm already working on that. I don't use a wide midfielder. I don't have a need for a wide playmaker. I think we can do more with him, and I think we can make him into quite a special signing for us. More of a speculative one, this one is Chris Williams. He's a left winger slash left midfielder. Released by Bradford City, picked him up on a free, thought we'd give him a go. We can just sell him if he doesn't turn into anything or let him go either way. Just one to look at, really. And likewise, Timmy Curran, a right back and a central centre half on on a free from Waterford. He played for them once, and I think it was the, it was this season that's just finished. Played well for them. He's got three and a half star potential. I think we'll keep him around just to see if he develops into anything. But I was quite happy to pick him up for nothing. And then, of course, the big out was Marshall Wickham joining Liverpool for £9,000. We have got a good sell on him, so we're doing OK. He's already worth £350,000. They wouldn't loan him back to us. I tried. They want to play with a higher standard of players for some reason. So maybe we'll try and bring him back next season, because I don't think he will have broken into Liverpool's first team by then. But, you know, sad times. We had to let him go, but we, we brought in... Uh, Rodolfo Aceves to replace him essentially like for like and I think he'll just pick up where Wickham left off. The other potential big outgoing is Karol Mashevsky. I have had some as you can see on your screen very big offers for him. I'm negotiating. I want to see if I can get it up to a million for him. That would be nice. He wants to join Leeds ahead of all the other teams. If I can get a million for him I'd be very happy with that. I'd be sad to see him go but we've got what four first team quality right backs in the squad he's not a player I would be hugely upset by by losing if we can get good money for him get a good sell-on clause on top of that that's a really good piece of business anyway 
let's go talk about what we've missed since the last game we played Huddersfield. We drew one all with Wickham, who have become a bit of a bogey team for us. Marshall Wickham scoring for us for one of the last times. For the last time, I forgot he didn't score in the, in the MK Dons game. We won 4-2. Mashevsky scoring one. Dixon getting one. Petty getting a brace. Wickham doing nothing on his last appearance at the club, unfortunately. Which brings us now to Arsenal. Let's go see if we can beat them. So our starting lineup today is going to be Starkey, Mashevsky, Mascara, Chatfield, Curtis, Kerrigan, Hardy, Jeffries and Dixon, French and Petty up top. We've got Porter, Kirk, Lee, Hadaway, Lee, Watson and Power on the bench. Obviously a lot of players who came in on loan not playing because they are cup tied for various reasons, having played in the competition, etc. Kyle John not playing because he's, again, like the third best right wing of the club. Justin to have a look at him. And the other big news as well I forgot to tell you is Jason Porter has announced he is retiring at the end of the season, which is quite sad, but he will continue on as our head of youth development. I was hoping he'd stay on for another season. I tried to persuade him to stay on for another season purely because I want him to have played in every single division of English football, and it's, it's not going to happen for him, unfortunately. But that's fine. Let's just go play Arsenal. The only player who's a really big... Uh, a really big deal in the Arsenal team is Martin Guinness, who we had at Sunderland this season, I believe. And we've also got Trey Coyle playing for them on the wing, who is a decent prospect if you pick him up as a lower league club. Pretty good signing to pick up on the free when he gets released, usually. Into the rest room, it's a come on, show what you can do to keep our run going. Nobody cares. Nobody cares at all. They're telling you. Both teams can in good form. You rate your chance ahead of kickoff, of course. It's not best weather. It doesn't matter because we both have to play in it, so it's all good. I've just noticed that Tyrese John Jules is also on the bench for Arsenal. I believe he's the nephew of Danny John Jules, the guy that was the cat in Red Dwarf, but he's also a decent footballer, so if he comes on, he could be one to watch out for on the Arsenal side. But the teams are coming out, the teams are ready, everyone's getting in their nice little huddles ready for the game. Let's go beat Arsenal. Free kick for Arsenal it's with Trey Coyle, puts the ball forward. Starkey makes a bit of a Hollywood save, but gets to it and just gets rid of it immediately looking for Dixon on the left-hand side. He's got options inside of him, flicks it over the top looking for Kieran French. Can Kieran French finish it? When the keepers dived too early and made that so easy for Kieran French. That's his 10th goal of the season, and I don't think he'll get an easier chance at any point in his life. Good to see the fans have shown up in droves for this one, as you expect with the PJT. French just, I mean, the keeper had already gone down. The keeper had gone down before he even thought about shooting and basically gave him an open goal. 11 minutes in, 1-0. Corner for Arsenal, that's with Trey Coyle. Puts it into the box. Let's get rid of this if we can. Chatfield's missed it. McGuinness missed it. Chatfield picked it up and now we're back on the break again. Hoofs it long. I don't know why. There is no Harchester player there. Not a single Harchester player there. And Sheridan now picks up the ball for Arsenal. Puts it forward and it's headed on to Syrian. Ball goes over the top looking for Ricky Jones and I mean immediate immediate equaliser. It wasn't what we were looking for. We're going to yell some encouragement, see if we can get ourselves back on top, pick the heads up, just keep things going as best we can. I mean really that all came from the big wasteful ball from Chatfield upfield. It was there was no point hoofing it long. There was nobody there. He had time, could have held on to it, could have let the players regroup. Could have done almost anything, quite frankly, and we'd have been in a better position than we were then. He's just beat the offside trap as well, and Ricky Jones with a great finish. Free kick for Arsenal, it's with Orr, which is a very audacious name. Patino, ball forward, looking for Trey Coyle. We've got to get back behind the ball here. Mashevsky making a good tackle, showing where people are willing to pay lots of money for him. And Mascara heads it away, but only as far as Patino. Ulad Mahan, which is a cracking name. Jeffries makes the tackle that Ricky Jones is through again, and that's 2-1. And we've very much got to start pulling ourselves back together. I'm very aware at this point that Curtis and Kerrigan are not having the best games of their career. Neither is Jeffries or Petty, if we're quite honest. I mean, it just Jeffries should have done more to win that. Should have done much more to win that. And we are starting to fall apart, and we need to get past Arsenal here. Because I do very much want the Papa John's trophy. Goal kicking, it's Mitchell taking it for Arsenal. It goes long and we should hopefully head this away. We haven't. Ricky Jones has headed it on. It's down with Ulad Mahand and with Suryam. We've got to get this ball back. Now Curtis gets in the way of it. And again puts it forward with nobody there. 
Beginner has to sweep up easily, as with Sheridan now. Elad Mahan, ball goes forward, Chatfield breaks it up, finds Kieran French, French to Petty. Petty plays an Aris Kerrigan. Can Kerrigan finish? He can't, Remy Mitchell turning that ball over the bar. We've got ourselves a corner, and hopefully we can get ourselves an equaliser from this. Steve Hardy going slightly longer than usual. Mashevsky on the ball, plays it back to Hardy, hopefully he wasn't offside into the box. And Mascara just nods it into the hands of Mitchell, who releases it immediately. And Jones is running at us. And there's not much back there. And we've got to make a tackle in Curtis Jones. But, I'm sorry, Curtis, very lucky not to stay, not to come through. Curtis Jones in my mind now. He's been with us so long on the Sunderland slash lead save that I just can't forget about him as Dixon plays it back to Curtis. To Steve Hardy. Hardy to Dixon. Dixon beats his man, gets into the box. Can he finish? Not shooting like that. <laughs> not shooting like that. He can't. And that is half time. And we're still 2-1 down. And Jeffries is the man really letting us down in midfield today. I'm not sure I can be having that. Let's do a... I expect to see a better showing in the second half. I think we're probably going to let Curtis and Jeffries know. Actually, we'll let Kerrigan know as well. There's more to come. I believe they've got what it takes. They're looking motivated. I'll a quick look at tactics as well. Because I have a weird feeling that Steve Hardy is a better playmaker than Lewis Jeffrey, at the top of my head he is. Let's swap those guys around and see if that makes any difference whatsoever. You never know, we might get lucky, that might be what makes the difference. Free kick for Arsenal, Avia is taking it, straight at goal, straight into goal. I think that's gone straight through Harry Starkey's hands, and that's very much time to start looking at some changes now. I think we're going to take Curtis off, and we will send Barry Lee on, We'll take Kerrigan off because he's done very little. In fact, we'll leave Kerrigan on for now. We'll take Jeffries off because he's somehow got worse. And I'm going to send Kai Power in. That feels like a couple of good changes to make right away. Free kick for us now. Hardy taking it. Puts it into the box. No one really there. Mascara is not going to get there. Hardy picks up the ball again the edge of the box and loses it immediately to Idaho. Ball goes forward to Ricky Jones. I brought all three subs on because I really didn't feel like I had any choice at this stage in proceedings. And things have not really picked up. Idaho on the ball now. No tackling is happening at all. Sheridan, who's getting very aggressive. He's further forward than I've seen him all game. And now Idaho to Aziz. Aziz across to Patino. Patino to Idaho again to Ricky Jones. Back to Idaho through to Ricky Jones. This will be a hat trick. Sure, now John Jules is there. Oh, Lordy. Lordy, 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 I don't know what just happened, but I know I'm not very happy about it. <laughs> uh, I just yelled, already put a great shout out, and I think that was well-timed, because this is appalling. We have just fallen apart now, and we are going very firmly out of the Papa John's Trophy. Free kick for Arsenal, it's going to be Mitchell taking it. And he's going to take his time on this one. There's 18 minutes left on the clock. Ball goes forward and Porter picks up the ball. Plays it through for Kieran French. Can Kieran French get himself a goal here? Not shooting like that. And not shooting like that twice. I think we've got ourselves a corner here. And hopefully that will yield results. Hardy going short to Kai Power. Kai Power back to Mashevsky. Mashevsky, I thought might have a punt then. Power has given it away. He's been tackled and gone down. I don't think we're going to get anything for that. I think that was just, just bad times. Hardy into the box. Back to Barry Lee. Puts the crossover. Sheridan heads it away to Idaho. And this has got 5-1 written all over it. As Ricky Jones picks it up. He's got to be looking for his hat-trick here. He's got to be looking for his hat-trick. We've, we've really got to do something about this. Let's get rid of this. We're not going to. It's gone wide. And we just, we're just looking awful right now. And that's the final whistle. The dream is over. 4-1, we get beaten by Arsenal. I'm not happy with your performance out there. I think actually we're going to say we're training tomorrow because I'm pretty unhappy with that as a performance. We've just collapsed and we should be doing better. We need to be doing better. I mean, the only advantage to going out of this trophy is that we now can focus our attention entirely on the league, but we should be doing better. We should be doing much better than this, especially if the Arsenal's under 23s. We should be able to beat them. And it's quite sad that we're not at a disappointing defeat. I think that's going to be a performance unacceptable. And I apologise to Porters. How does such a disappointing result impact your plans from now on? Well, the lads would do a day off if they won, but uh, they didn't. So, tough luck. 
Right, let's go see where we are coming back in the next episode because that's going to be important. Sorry they've been erratic of late, by the way. I've been doing exams. I'm back at work next week. So think, well, actually this week as I record this. So things will be a bit all over the place for a little while. We'll come back for the Northampton game. Does that work out? I know, we'll come back for the Bolton game. We'll go Bolton, Fleetwood, Rotherham, Gillingham. That feels like a plan. So we'll come back for the Bolton game in the next episode. So definitely come and join me for that. In the meantime, guys, you can find me on the social blog. I'm on Twitter, Insta, and Patreon at Chasing Lamely. Don't forget to like and subscribe, which is up there. Magic Graphic will remind you you should subscribe and ring the bell. All notifications will tell you when I go live with the FM Premier League. And until next time, guys, thank you for watching. Have as always been Chasing Lamely. And I'll see you all very soon. Have a good one.